Hello and what's up GSC Pokemon Challenges fam. How are you guys doing? Today I've brought you something very, very special. I think you're really going to enjoy it. It's time for the first episode of the Faulkner Maximum Battles series. Where we're going to find out how many Pokemon can beat the first gym if we just take every possible trainer battle before we even fight Faulkner. Now you might be saying, wait, wasn't this channel all about minimum battles? What the hell happened? Well, a couple things. Number one, when I looked around the landscape at YouTube and saw other people doing solo challenges in Gen 2, I realized that basically everyone completes Sprout Tower. And why wouldn't you? I mean, it's the way we played as kids and it makes sense. You gotta get that HM5 somehow, right? But then there was a second reason. You see, everybody knows that I am preparing to have a little boy later this year and I really started thinking about as a parent, how do I want to raise my child, right? Do I want to tell him that his favorite Pokemon is a failure and cannot beat the first gym? No, I say. I say we give every Pokemon a legitimate shot to get through Faulkner and get to the end of the game. So that's what we're going to do right now. We are going to give these Pokemon max DVs. We're going to give them egg moves. Heck, by breeding, we can even give them TM moves. And while we're at it, why don't we just give them some held items? That sounds like a plan to me. Let's get into it. Let's check out our challengers. Today we have Caterpie, Paris, Magikarp, Jolteon, Sunkern, Shuckle, Heracross, Smeargle, and Tyroke. Now you might be saying, why did you choose these Pokemon, Teo? Well, it's because they are a nice representation of the different Pokemon that failed against Faulkner on minimum battles. And we can see some clear champions here. I mean, Jolteon is the best of the evolutions. We've got Heracross, who is one of the strongest Pokemon in the game. We've even got the best Gen 2 Pokemon, Tyrogue. Tyrogue, guys. So let's get this done. We're going to give them every possible advantage and see if they can beat Faulkner. Let's lead off with the legend itself, Heracross. And I'm going to take this moment while I'm on camera just briefly. You can see, oh, I've got a shuckle up there. <laughs> So I'm going to take this moment while I'm on camera now that I've finally got Heracross up there to just formally announce the Minimum Battle series is done. It's over, OK? No more Minimum Battle series. We are doing the Maximum Battle series from here on out because we got to give every Pokemon a chance. Just like when my kid gets older and he starts playing sports, I want to make sure he gets that participation trophy. So we're going to make sure that all these Pokemon get their participation trophies while we're at it. So let's get into the first Pokemon, which is Heracross, the absolute legend. Let's do this. Now, when we did that whole minimum battle series thing, we were so unfair to this Pokemon because we only let it use its level up moves and it goes into the Faulkner gym and it just gets completely wrecked by Honest Abe because it's four times weak to flying. But that's not how you would play a Heracross anyway. You would just take every single battle. But while we're at it, we're going to give this one a better move set to go with it so that we can guarantee victory in every single fight. So now we have set up this Heracross to have absolute success in this challenge. It is going to have a move set of Headbutt, Curse, Mega Horn, and Earthquake. Mega Horn, of course, is a level of move, but via breeding, you could actually get that on a level five Heracross. We are also going to add on Headbutt, Curse, and Earthquake, which are all TM moves, giving this Pokemon the perfect advantage. But not only that, we're going to give it a held item, Leftovers. Leftovers will allow us to heal a little bit of HP every time in battle, and that should make some close fights just a little more consistent. So let's see if we can beat the first gym while taking every single trainer battle. So first things first, it's time to take on rival number one, and he's going to come in with his Cyndaquil. Fortunately, we have given ourselves the ultimate move. Earthquake. <laughs> Get wrecked. Oh, there we go. The first one hit KO of the challenge and Heracross. He's here for his redemption arc. Clearly, he's going to be the best Pokemon ever. And now for the first key change that we're going to make in this series, we are going to fight against Youngster Joey. Usually we just fight Youngster Mikey and get right on up to Violet City, but that's just unfair to some of these Pokemon. So we're going to take this one on and Youngster Joey, show us what you got. So here he sends out his rat and we are going to uh, Mega Horn it. Oh, and we missed, <laughs> but we hit the second Mega Horn and that is an easy win. We could learn Horn Attack, guys. 
We ain't gonna learn Horde Attack. We got a better horn on this one already. Here we go. We can fight youngster Mikey. He's guarding the path with his level two Pidgey here. And guess what? We're going to headbutt you. And now the rat comes out. So uh, we heal a little HP with leftovers and let's just Mega Hornet. And there we go. Easy victory. Now we have another trainer that we've never fought before. Don. <laughs> Donny boy. He's here. I, I could make political jokes. I'm not going to make political jokes. Let's just uh, take him on with his little caterpillar. Headbutt. <laughs> he sends out another caterpillar. Headbutt. <laughs> oh, we didn't one shot. Rip. Rip. Mega horn him now. We're angry we didn't one hit KO that second Caterpie. I mean, what kind of trainer are we if we don't one hit KO everything, guys? Come on. Come on. So now we can fight against another bug catcher. Bug catcher Wade. Wade, you're in way over your head, buddy. You should have waded in not quite so far as we one shot and get to level seven. Mega horn one shots the Caterpie. Out comes the Weedle. We're going to give it an earthquake. Get wrecked. Oh, and now another Caterpie. And we missed the Mega Horn. No. Oh, we could have lost that fight, clearly. Clearly, that was very close. But Heracross, he's made it. He is a champion up to this point. But now, instead of going and taking on this gym, which is just going to be super hard, let's not do that. We don't need challenge. Come on. Let's get right up here into the Sprout Tower where we can fight this Sage. And here he's going to lead off with his Bell Sprout. And we're going to say, hey, have a Mega Horn. Get wrecked. Next, Bell Sprout, Mega Horn. Very nice. And finally, a third Bell Sprout. They're all level three. <laughs> we're just sitting here mopping up. We're up to level eight now. We can come over here and fight this guy. He's like, you will not get HM5. I will not let you. Headbutt. <laughs> we don't even need to mess with the Mega Horn. Headbutt is more than enough. It's perfectly accurate. It will one shot everything here at this level. Now we can pop right up here. There's another Sage right there. Got to make sure not to miss any of these boys while we're in here because that, that would ruin the run, guys. Just ruin the run if we miss even a single trainer. We're up to level nine. We can just destroy that one now. Edmund, you're a joke. Oh, and we get X accuracy. Yes, we can use X accuracy. Can grab a potion. And now let's just fight more Sages. Yes. So here, this guy, he's got a bell sprout. Headbutt. Easy win. We are stronger than you. You don't need to tell us about strengths, Mr. Sagey boy. Headbutt. Oh, it's not a one hitter. Rip. The run is over. Now we can fight this guy against whom he's got another bell sprout. We're going to headbutt the bell sprout and uh, get the flinch. I guess we could have just gone for earthquake there. And now he sends out hoot hoot. Get headbutt. Nice. So Troy, he goes down a rival. He's uh, look, it's the root of the rival, guys. We have to take the same route through the game as our rival. What are we doing if we don't fight all these traitors? We got to prove that we're the best. Come fight the Sage. So now against the final Sage here, we've got Sage Lee. I'm going to Earthquake and look at the one shot. Yes, I know he has the Hoot Hoot coming up, so we're going to just one shot those with Earthquake. We're up to level 11 now and now Headbutt. And let's do one more headbutt here on the level 10 Hoot Hoot. We easily win. Didn't even need to use Curse. Come on. So now we'll simply use the escape rope to get out of here. Let's go heal up some PP because we got to have the maximum amount of PP when we go into Faulkner's gym. You know, we don't want to have him complaining about how tiny our amount of PP is. So uh, here we're going to fight against Honest Abe. Now the Honest Abe fight, I think we go headbutt. And we outspeed, he pecks us for massive damage, but we do get through. Very nice. Look at that. Now we can come and fight against this guy, the old God Rod. He's got nothing on us. Just headbutt. Easy one hit KO there. And how about we headbutt this Pidgey too? And we have done it. Yes. Now I'm going to simply heal up. Let's save the game. And let's get into the Faulkner fight. So let's check the stats as we come in. Of course, oh, we tried to headbutt him. <laughs> Here we are level 11 with 42 HP with Heracross. We have leftovers, headbutt, curse, mega horde and earthquake. Obviously, Earthquake does nothing for us here, but we've got 36 attack, 25 defense, 18 special attack, 30 special defense, and we've got 27 speed. I'm not sure if we have a shot here in this fight, but let's just find out. So here, Faulkner attempt number one. We're going to start off by cursing at his pigeon over and over and over again. 
because look at this. It uses tackle, but we immediately heal back the damage. <laughs> oh, this pigeon, it just has no shot. And here, once we get all the curses set up, we're going to then progress in the fight. So with the maximum curse load, we can now headbutt and one hit KO there. Out comes the Pidgeotto. We recover our HP. He goes Gust. He does 11 damage, but we get a one hit KO there. And just like that, Heracross, it could learn Endure. It's not going to learn Endure. Heracross is an absolute legend. Clearly, all we have to do to get this Pokemon through Faulkner and, and easily is just to give it access to some of its best moves via TM and via breeding, give it access to leftovers, and then just fight every single trader in this section of the game. You might not have needed every trader, but come on. Are we not going to fight some trainers? Why would we ever do that? Doesn't make any sense to me. But with that, Heracross is successfully through. So let's check our next challenger and see how we go. So Heracross has been taken off of today's challengers, but uh, I didn't set everything to put it in the past column. So uh, you, you guys are just going to have to imagine that it has passed this section of the game. And with that, let's now take on the next challenger. I think we've got to try this with Shuckle. So now it's time to try Shuckle, another Pokemon that was just completely done dirty in the Faulkner Minimal Battle series. So we're going to start a brand new game and give this one an actual shot of getting through. And just like that, we have given Shuckle the perfect opportunity to get through this section of the game. Not only have we replaced its moveset with Curse, Rollout, Earthquake, and Sludge Bomb, but we've also given it leftovers. So yet again, it should have a chance to get through these battles. Now what we have to find out is if we are able to beat all of the trainers inside of that Sprout Tower, and then finally, can we just one-shot everything in Faulkner's Gym? Now I have seen that Shuckle is actually used by speedrunners in some cases to beat Red because of its massive defense and the fact that it's just kind of a meme Pokemon, but we didn't give this one a proper shot in the Faulkner Minimum Battle series. We required this Pokemon to actually use its normal level up moves to try to beat Faulkner, and that's just completely unfair. I mean, after all, how are we supposed to beat a game with the Pokemon named Aw Shucks if we can't even use a Shuckle? Come on! So it's time to take on Rival 1 and get some redemption for Shuckle here. He's coming out with the Totodile, but we're going to curse at him. Yes, curse him! Look at him try to deal damage to us <laughs> with our Shuckle, just spamming curse. And now it's time for the rollout. Let's roll out, boys. And we get the critical hit turn one, and it's a two hit KO there. We get to level six. Aw, oh, shucks, we just took that guy down. So here I'm going to take on Youngster Mikey, against whom I'm simply going to roll out and one hit KO. And here we can continue to roll out here. Oh, we missed the rollout. No, no, shucks. We missed the rollout. Oh, come on, roll out. You were supposed to be better than this. There we go. We get through Youngster Mikey, but we forgot to fight against Youngster Joey. This is my habit, guys. I'm so used to minimum battles. I just run right past Youngster Joey. This guy gets no respect, I swear. So here I'm going to go Earthquake this time instead. It's going to be a two hit KO, but we easily get through that fight. Now we've got to be worried about this guy right here because, you know, Don, when you're the Don, you're kind of tough unless you get rolled out on. <laughs> oh, take the rollout, buddy. Take the rollout and cry. Oh, look at the one hitter there. Easy, easy victory. I like how Shuckle deals with like no damage, but he's just recovering every point of damage that he takes with the leftovers. It's kind of ridiculous. So here, let's curse at this guy even. Just curse a few times. We're already slower. Who cares? Who cares? Look at him trying to damage me while I just sit here and spam curses at him. And now with all the curses set up, it's time to go into the rollout and we get a one hit here. Oh, he tried to poison us one hit. And we could learn a move, Rap. We will not learn Rap. Who who learns Rap? Seriously. So here, roll out, one hit. And finally, Caterpie, get the roll out. Easy victory. So there's no problem right there with Shuckle. He is just a beast at this point. God's tier. God's tier. Ah, shucks. What are we going to do? We're going to go into the Sprout Tower and proceed to destroy 
Now, the one problem we have in here is that these opponents are going to use Vine Whip on us. And since we don't have a way to boost our special defense, we just have to kind of curse at them and hope that this will be enough. Oh, but they're only doing one damage per hit because they're level three. Oh, this is perfect. Now I'm simply going to roll out. Yes, get rolled out on Shuckle. He's just rolling all over these little flowers here. He he doesn't care for your flower beds. Come on. Oh, and the destruction, the sheer and utter destruction of Sage Nico there. Even without curse, it's a two hit KO with rollout here. And I think after the first Bellsprout, we're just now on a one hit KO spree from here. Oh, look at that. Sage Chow. We're chowing down on Sage Chow here. I like how like all of these guys have like Asian names except for Edmund. He's just like, I'm Edmund. I've joined this this cult. <laughs> from from like the I've come all the way from Britain to join this this little cult to flowers and here we are going to roll out on Sage Jean and easily get through right there now onward onward I say it turns out to be a three hit KO against these level six bell sprouts but still no problem Neil I guess he's Edmund's buddy and now we can just continue the rollout spam here on this Sage Troy he's gonna send out the hoot hoot and get wrecked. Oh, look at the destruction. So it kind of turns out that Shuckle with rollout would be kind of strong, just saying. So here we've made it all the way to Sage Lee at the end of the Sprout Tower. We're just gonna roll out repeatedly. We get a two hitter there on the first Bell Sprout. It's gonna be a one shot on the second Bell Sprout. We could learn the move Encore. We will not learn Encore. <laughs> We're going to just keep going. And here Hoot Hoot gets wrecked, yes. Look at the destruction that we have wrought with our little Shuckle. These guys got shucked up, guys. Now, I don't think Shuckle's gonna give a shuck about this gym, but let's just find out. So here in the Honest Abe fight, we're going straight for the rollout, and we're just gonna heal the damage that he does with leftovers. <laughs> so it takes two hits to knock him out. On now to the God Rod, where we're simply going to spam the same move. Let's do it. Roll out. Oh, come on. Rollout has to hit though. We get a one hitter there with a crit and now the second Pidgey comes out and we just roll out and destroy it. Easy victory. And it's on to Falconer himself. So let's check the tail of the tape as we come in. Shuckle, he's he's shucking guys. He's level 15, he's got 36 HP. We have Curse, Rollout, Earthquake and Sludge Bomb as the move set. Leftovers on. Yeah, we can see we've taken 10 optional battles and four TMs to get to this point. But hey, it's technically legal. You can technically exchange TMs between versions by simply using Pokemon Stadium 2. So <laughs> with that being done, we are here with 14 attacks, 79 defense, 13 special attacks, 79 special defense. And look at that 12 speed. We don't care about our speed. Come on. Nobody cares about speed. Let's get into this fight against Faulkner. So here, Faulkner attempt number one. We are going to sit here and spam the curses. We're going to curse at his pigeon so much that it's never going to want to mud slap anyone else again. Slinging mud at a cursing shuckle? Are you kidding me? Come on. We won't be able to hit anything, but he won't be able to damage us. So this is going to be perfect. I'm sure of it. Here we go for the rollout. We miss. We go for the rollout. Now we hit and it's a one hit KO. Now Gust does two damage. <laughs> we just immediately heal it back and roll out. Oh, darn your cherished bird. He wants to say shuck you, but I say no, shuck you. There we go. We have beaten him with Shuckle. This Pokemon's a legend. This Pokemon now is set up to completely destroy the rest of the game. We could already put this one in the final winner's column against Red, we know it. It's an impossible to defeat Pokemon. But with that being done, it's time to move down the list a little bit. Let's look at some Pokemon that might have struggled just a little bit more in this section and maybe actually needed all of these fights. So now it is time to give a shot to my personal favorite Pokemon on this list that failed. It's time for Jolteon to prove that it is in fact the best evolution. It's an undeniable fact that, in spite of the fact that there have been many evolutions throughout the years, Jolteon is the only one that is not terrible. But 
it got done dirty in this section because of the fact that they decided to give Faulkner a move that lowers accuracy and is super effective against his one major type weakness? Are you kidding me? Come on, come on. Ice type doesn't really exist, so it had to be the electric type that they had to nerf. So here we are going to pick up our Jolteon and let's check the starting moveset of this Pokemon once we've fixed it to actually make it viable. So as we can see, we have given it access to Thunderbolt, which is both a TM in Gen 1 and a Tutor move in Gen 2, so technically possible, just trade it to another cartridge. And we've given it Body Slam, which is also a TM move in Gen 1. Hey, we never said they had to be Gen 2 learn sets here, guys. Then we have Iron Tail and Curse, both TMs in this generation, meaning that this Pokemon is going to have the ultimate moves. Let's get into this challenge and find out if it's possible to beat the first gym now with this Jolteon. So first things first, we're gonna take on Rival 1, where we have an excellent strategy. We are simply going to body slam his Chikorita. We paralyze it on turn one. So now he's growled at us. So we're simply going to spam Thunderbolt at him repeatedly. And there we go, easy victory. Now I hear some of you out there just screaming at me that well, if you're just going to give it Thunderbolt, you should just do minimum battles because Thunderbolt should just allow you to, you know, outspeed and one hit KO everything in Faulkner's gym. But can we actually say that? Do we know that definitively? I don't think we do. So we're going to fight Youngster Joey. So here in the Youngster Joey fight, Thunderbolt one shot. Very nice. We get to level six and now we can move on to Youngster Mikey, who is actually required. And we're simply going to just hold auto away on Thunderbolt and proceed to destroy everything in this section of the game. Now, Bugcatcher Don is just going to give us a little chance to keep holding out away as we get to level seven. And look at the absolute destruction that is wrought by this Jolteon. If they had just given this Pokemon proper moves, it's clearly no problem to get through this first section of the game. And sure enough, Youngster Wade is another one hit KO fest. So I hear you guys, we should just totally go and fight against Faulkner at this point. It, it's just completely logical. But you're forgetting one major issue. How do we use Flash later in the game? What if we want to Flash people, guys? Are you telling me that I'm not allowed to Flash people when I want to? What is this? So here we're going to come take on this Sage and uh, Sage Nico is going to get body slammed and it's not a one hit KO. Are you kidding me? I'm going to curse at him now because I'm angry about the fact that I didn't one shot with my body slam. So there, now we can get the one hit KO. We could learn Sand Attack at level eight. We will not learn Sand Attack at level eight. Here, we can just body slam and get a one hit KO now on all of these Pokemon since we've gotten a little power up. Very, very nice. And if nothing else, guys, what we can say definitively is that these runs are going to be consistent because we all know consistency is the key to Pokemon. So we've made it to the top floor of the tower where now we're going to deal with Jin. He's actually got a level six Bellsprout. So this is like the first one I think we should actually curse reasonably at and then go into the body slam. And it is a one hit KO with two curses at level 10. Now we've hit another damage rounding threshold. If you don't know about damage rounding thresholds, go watch a Scott's thoughts video or something like what are you doing asking me in the comments all the time? What do you mean damage rounding threshold? As if I would know anything about the things that I talk about in a video. Come on. Now I would do want to take this moment to just say that we should probably do the run where we actually have to set up all the curses in every single battle, regardless of whether they're necessary or not, because I mean, yet again, that's how we played as kids, guys. And if we're going to play the way that we played as kids, then we just have to do it. So here we have made it to the top. Sage Lee is ready for destruction, ready to get completely wrecked. So we're going to curse at him. Oh, we've run out of curses. No, but body slam one shots. And now we're out of body slams. No, we ran out of PP. We didn't have enough PP guys. Jolteon gets wrecked, but here Thunderbolt and we've defeated Hoot Hoot. Easy, easy victory. So now it's finally time for redemption for this Jolteon. We are coming in now to the gym at level 12. We're going to take on on Stabe. Here he's got that Spiro and we're going to say, hey, Spiro, get Thunderbolted. Very nice. And now Godrod, he's going to try to put up a fight here, but we're just going to hold auto A on the Thunderbolt and hope that it's enough. Maybe we could lose this fight. I don't know, guys. You tell me. 
So with that, we finally made it to Faulkner. And here at level 12, we've got 39 HP, Thunderbolt, Body Slam, Iron Tail, and Curse. We've got the leftovers on just because, you know, this, this could be too hard, guys. I'm just saying. And uh, we've got 24 attack, 20 defense, 34 special attack, 30 special defense, and 39 speed. Let's get into this fight. And uh, I, I predict like maybe five resets here in order to get through. But just tell me what you think down in the comments below. With that, Faulkner attempt number one. So here he's got a pigeon and I'm going to Thunderbolt it. Oh, that's an easy one hit KO. Out comes the Pidgeotto. And I'm not sure, guys, should we use Iron Tail here? Is that the best strategy? I don't know. I, I guess I'll just go Thunderbolt because I don't know how to play the game now. And uh, yeah, <laughs> we completely crush Faulkner there with two one hit KOs. So it turns out that Jolteon, yet again, just kind of got done dirty by its moveset. I think if you even gave this Pokemon Thundershock, it would have gotten through the gym on minimal battles. But hey, why do that? That that sounds hard. Just do this and we get through. So with that, we have gotten every single Pokemon up to this point through Faulkner. Let's try another one. And we can see today's challenger list getting smaller and smaller and smaller. So now we have only one more fully evolved Pokemon to test out in this episode. That is going to be the Smeargle. And remember, Smeargle only learns Sketch, which is kind of sketchy in and of itself. But we're going to try to get it through this gym on maximum battles. And if it doesn't get through on maximum battles, we might actually have our first Pokemon that fails in this section. So here with Smeargle, this is the first one that I'm going to just actually turn serious for a second <laughs> and say I'm not sure how it's going to do even on maximum battles because this Pokemon doesn't typically get to learn any new moves. It, it's not like it has egg moves, doesn't learn TM moves. It's all sketch. But there is a way that I think we can get through this section. It's just going to require breaking another one of our rules. This is also the first one where maybe adding on leftovers isn't very good because while yes, we do get a heal up some damage periodically, we're not getting really any major advantage off of that. So instead, I'm going to give a gold berry because why not? <laughs> Let's just give a gold berry and see if we can actually get through this. So here, Sketch is going to fail turn one, of course. We're going to have to go into struggle strats and not do a whole lot of damage. But now we'll heal up to full health because the gold berry heals more damage than a normal berry. The problem is that we've been growled at. So even this is not looking great against rival one and we get wrecked. I think the real issue is the growl, though. If we can just get a run where he doesn't use growl and just tackles us like normal, you know, maybe we could actually get through this fight. But we should also keep in mind that we don't technically have to beat rival one and we can simply move on in this challenge. So here, let's take on Youngster Joey, where I think this one is perfectly fine to just go for the struggle strats. He's not going to be able to growl at us. We've got leftovers on to heal a little bit of damage. You can use things like Tail Whip that don't damage us for a turn. And just like that, we get through the Youngster Joey fight with no issues. Now for Youngster Mikey, we've gotten a little extra XP from that Youngster Joey fight. We can come in here and just spam struggle until we win. And here we've made it to the Rattata. Yes, tackle will do decent damage, but we're healing little by little with our leftovers. He goes for a tail whip and we win. But now here, before I fight any more trainers, I'm going to go do something that we can only technically do on maximum battles. You see, typically I would say that we can't black out and keep anything from a battle because that would be an extra battle, right? If you came in here and fought Honest Abe and you sketched Peck from him and then you fainted, well, in a minimum battles run, that would kind of be an extra battle. You would be fighting him one more time. But here, this is maximum battles, so we don't care about that. Let's get in here. Let's sketch Peck. So he pecks us, we sketch it, and now we're going to lose this fight. We already know, but that's perfectly fine. We have Peck now on our moveset to use against all of these other trainers, starting with this bug catcher Don right here. So now Donny Boy is going to face down a pecking Jolteon named Smeargle. Oh God, I didn't even realize that I kept its name as Jolteon. <laughs> Let's fix that really quickly. So there we go. His name is now Smeargle again, and we can move on and fight Bugcatcher Wade. 
Now, of course, the main thing with Smeargle is that even when it has a super effective move, it still doesn't do much damage because why would it? It's basically just, you know, using a non stab peck and we can get through all these fights pretty easily, but it's taking two turns at least to knock these Pokemon out. But with those bug catchers done, we can now move on to the Sprout Tower, where yet again, Peck is the ideal move because it is super effective against the Bell Sprouts in here. Let's just see how they go. So here, the first Sage, we are simply going to get a two hit KO with Peck here. And it's not like we're super scared of the Vine Whips from level three Pokemon. So we easily get through this section. And here we are about to level up. So we're going to reach level 10, get another damage rounding threshold. And we're only one level away from getting another sketch, at which point we can learn another move. And that might give us an even further advantage. And there we go. We get to level 11 and we learn sketch. So now we just have to think in this run, what other moves do we want to learn? Now, Vine Whip is pretty trash, so we're not going to really deal with that move. Does Hoot Hoot know anything decent? He identifies us. Good job. Now, obviously, Peck is not super effective here, so we're just going to have to whittle this one down. But just like that, we have made it to Sage Lee. We are ready to wreck the end of this Bellsprout Tower. And yes, he's got a level seven Bellsprout. It's going to be a three hit KO here, but we get through just fine. Get to level 12. Now, Peck is going to just continue to put in work here as we're going to destroy this Bellsprout. And now Hoot Hoot comes out. He uses Foresight and we've run out of PP. No, we're going to have to sketch Foresight, <laughs> which we're now just going to spam over and over and over again. No, we got wrecked here. Oh, this is terrible. We're healing up when he doesn't damage us, but uh, he is doing damage with Tackle. I wish he had used Tackle before we had to use our uh, second sketch here, but apparently Foresight. I'm going to reset here. So it turns out that Smeargle didn't do a very good job of managing his PP, so we're going to have to just go through this whole section again because I didn't save between all of those sages rip. Like I just never expected that we would actually use up 35 PP in here fighting all these sages. This is ridiculous. So here we once again get to level 11 and learn sketch. And I think I'm going to learn tackle off the hoot hoot here. I think that's going to give us what we need. We'll have extra damaging PP just in case. And we've got a same type move at that point, so it should be a little bit stronger. So here we have successfully sketched tackle, which we will now use since it again, it should be slightly stronger with our same type attack bonus. And we get through that fight just fine. Back to Sage Lee. Let's do this properly this time with maximum amounts of PP. So here for Sage Lee, we are simply going to hold auto A on Peck against his Bellsprout since it's super effective. It is the strongest move right here. It's a three hit KO on the first Bellsprout. Second Bellsprout comes out. We leveled up to level 12. Looks to be a two hitter now. And finally, Hoot Hoot comes out. We're going to use Tackle since it's a slightly stronger move. He growls at us like a jerk. Clearly, that was also a factor. Growl being in this battle. He growls again, but we're going to defeat him on this second attempt. Sage Lee, no problem, no problem at all. So after a quick heal and now being at level 12, let's take on Honest Abe for a second time. Last time we couldn't beat him on minimal battles, but now we have more levels, better moves. Let's just find out. So here I'm going to spam tackle here. We are faster than the Spearow and it's not doing nearly as much damage. And look at the destruction there. Easy victory as we get to level 13. Now onto the God Rod with his pigeons. We're simply going to spam tackle the whole way down. There are three hit KOs even here at level 13, but we are making our way through them without too much difficulty. And we have made it to Faulkner himself. Let's check the tail of the tape as we come in with Smeargle. We are now at level 13 with 42 HP. We have leftovers. Our moveset is Peck and Tackle because of our sketches. And now we have 15 attack, 18 defense, 15 special attack, 21 special defense, and 29 speed. We will outspeed here. We're going to drop a potion just to have full health. Save the game. Let's go. Faulkner attempt number one. So here against his Pidgey, I'm just going to spam Tackle. He misses a Tackle. And it turns out to be a three hit KO. Very, very nice. Now on Pidgeotto, we will outspeed and tackle didn't do that much. It did seven damage. So this is going to be a five hit KO, but we've got leftovers on and he's not doing that much damage. We get a critical hit and then we miss. So oh, come on. <laughs> but just like that, Smeargle gets to level 14 and it has redeemed itself. 
in the Faulkner battle. It is now one of the best Pokemon ever. Clearly. Obviously. There, there's no level of, of difficulty to this challenge whatsoever. Smeargle, legend. So with that, we have gotten Smeargle through. That does it for the fully evolved Pokemon. You know, some of them are single stage. They don't evolve at all. But the fully evolved Pokemon of this section. Now let's get into some that are actually going to be a little bit more of a challenge and find out if we can even give them a moveset that gets them through this gym on maximum battles. So coming back and looking at our challengers, most of these Pokemon have a weakness against the flying type, with one exception, Magikarp. So let's do that Magikarp run and see if we can give it a moveset that actually gets it through this section. Now Magikarp is obviously a legendary Pokemon. It's in the slow level up group. It's a Pokemon that every person who's ever played the game knows and loves. And in Generation 1, we were actually able to turn it into a Pokemon God, Godcarp. If you haven't seen the Godcarp versus Mewpoo run, check it, I'll link it in the description below, but you should totally watch that video for the poor editing on RBY Pokemon challenges and all. So here we are going to get our Magikarp, and he is going to be a legendary Pokemon from the beginning here, as we are going to give him an upgraded moveset. So just like that, we have upgraded Magikarp dramatically. Look at this moveset. Flail, Tackle, Reversal, and Bubble. Flail and Tackle are both level up moves, so technically they could be on the Pokemon at level 5 if you hatch it from breeding. And then we've got access to Reversal and Bubble, both of which were Gen 2 event moves. If we get really desperate, we might even add on Dragon Rage, but we're going to try with this moveset first, since this moveset can actually scale as it gets to a higher level. So first things first, we got to test this out on rival number one, where this guy destroyed us before, but now we have the power of Tackle. <laughs> Look how little damage we do with Tackle though, even with the pink bow on. Oh, we should be getting stronger. Now let's flail at him, because as he does more damage, flail should become stronger and stronger. And just like that, we do get through. Oh, that was ridiculous, though. Magikarp, even with this moveset, struggles a little bit there on that first battle. So here we're going to start off, of course, by taking on Youngster Joey. We're going to need levels to take on the Sprout Tower with this one because of our type weakness to water. So in this fight, it's pretty clear we just go for the tackles and try to knock this one out as quick as we can. We get a tail whip, but that's perfectly fine. As we get to level six, Youngster Joey has gone down. Now you might be saying, why not use Bubble? Bubble is technically still weaker than tackle, even with the same type attack bonus. And because our attack and special attack are exactly identical, in any case, we should simply use the stronger move, which is of course tackle. But here, once we take some damage, I think we can start going flail strats since it should be stronger. And we're doing decent damage here as we get through Youngster Mikey. Or maybe we should stay at lower health so we can just keep using flail strats here. So here we're two shotting here against these Caterpies at this current HP level with flail. And now on to the next bug catcher. So we're going to flail at him. We didn't quite get the one hitter, but we'll get a two hitter there. Out comes the next Caterpie. We leveled up here, so we gained a couple of points of HP and we're not quite one shotting here, but we can get through right there. And final Caterpie comes out and we're out of PP and flail. So he could knock us out with one more tackle. <laughs> no. So this Magikarp run might actually be kind of borderline hard just because of the fact that if we run out of flail PP, we actually won't do enough damage. Now, the obvious solution is simply not to go in on super low health. It's not like these bug catchers are going to do that much. But we really do want to be on low health, I think, when we go into the Sprout Tower because we want to get the ability to knock things out with flail. So first, we're going to take on bug catcher Wade for the second time. We'll start off with the tackles here at the beginning as he just string shots us and then misses his own tackle and we can easily knock out that Caterpie. Second Caterpie comes out. It's looking like a four hit KO on these Caterpies when we're at full health here using Tackle. We're going to wait to get on slightly lower health before we try to go in on the Flail strats. Here we've been poisoned. No, but we knocked that one out. Very good. And now let's Flail on this Caterpie and it's going to be a two hit KO. Easy victory. So I'm not sure how we're actually going to do here 
in the Sprout Tower. We do have slightly higher special defense than we have special attack, so maybe that will help us, but let's find out. So first, we're going to lead off with Flail, and we take a Vine Whip, and we're not doing nearly as much damage, it doesn't look like, to get through this. But we do one shot there, and here at 1 HP, we one shot there as we level up to level 8. The question is now, how do we do at this higher level against the next Sage? We might have to have 1 HP to get through these. Yeah, that is not a one-hitter, and we get wrecked. So I would actually predict that probably Faulkner's Gym is easier than the Sprout Tower at this point for this Pokemon. But let's just find out if we can even get through Sprout Tower. Obviously, if we were down to 1 HP, we'd be able to do it, but let's just see. So here we'll lead off with Tackle. We miss turn one. Now we're going into the Flail Strats. We get a KO right there. Here, it's not quite a one hitter, but we're back down to 1 HP. Yes, yes. Let me have 1 HP so I can destroy you. Perfect. Now I think we can just take on this Sage and just go full on on the Flail. We should get one hit KOs here. Oh yes, look at that. Oh yes, look at that. Oh, but again, we level up. We have two HP now, but we still get the one hit KO. That is perfect. Let's save the game. And now we have a real challenge. These Bell Sprouts up here on the top floor are level six. I'm really not sure we get through them. I'm going to grab the potion here just so I can. We might have to heal and just try to get through the fight normally, but let's see. So here, Bellsprout at level 6, we go for Flail. It's not quite a one-hit KO. Okay, so we're going to have to heal here and just pray, kind of, that we can get through. Attempt number 2 here against Sage Jean. Going to lead off with the tackle. He goes Growth. Ooh, that's bad. Now we have 5 HP left and we go for the Flail and we do not get through there. So let's try this again now, where I'm going to go for Tackle first, and he gets a critical hit, one hit KO with his Vine Whip. Oh, this is actually hard. So here, Tackle. He goes Growth. We're going to Tackle him again. He Vine Whips, and we just don't have the range here, guys. We just do not have the range. I think we want him to Vine Whip us and not go for Growth. So now we can Flail, but he doesn't do enough damage then. Oh, what would we want? We definitely need a critical hit here. Oh, he gets a better range? Oh, but it, yeah, it just isn't enough. So yeah, we need a growth. We need a critical hit from tackle. And then I think we just have to get lucky. If he just goes in on Vine Whip, we just lose. And there we finally get the range to knock out the Sage Gene. And now we need to heal up so that we can hopefully take on the next stage, which is going to be basically the same thing. Now, I think it's better to heal up with the berries right here. Let's just try this fight. So here we're going to go into Flail immediately. He uses Growth, which is standard. Gets us down to 4 HP, and we just don't quite get the range yet again. So it's basically the same situation all over again. We need to get like a critical hit, and we need him to go Growth into Vine Whip in order to get through this fight. Okay, this time we got a better range, and we do manage to knock him out. Very nice. Now we have to go out and heal up because we don't have enough HP to get through the next fight and we're definitely not going to be one shotting here. So it's time to take on Sage Troy. Let's just see how we go right here. So here we'll lead off with tackle on his Bellsprout. He goes for growth, which I think is what we want. Now we'll flail at him, but we're not doing nearly enough damage. So again, I think we need at least a critical hit here to have any shot. We get the crit right there. Very nice. But he goes Vine Whip turn one. That's not what we're looking for. I'm pretty sure we need him to go Growth into the Vine Whip in order to have a shot. Okay, this one we're down to one HP and we do manage to one hit KO there. We've got three HP going into Hoot Hoot. He tackles and knocks us out. Are you kidding me? I don't think he has to use Tackle here, but it appears that the Spellsprout has a 12 damage range against us. And if we get that, then we should actually be pretty good here. So... Maybe instead of the growth, what we actually need is for him to just get a 12 damage Vine Whip two turns in a row. Now it can be 12 or 13 damage it appears, so if he gets the 13 damage range, he will still knock us out in two turns. And to my knowledge, Flail cannot critical hit in Gen 2, so we're just stuck with whatever damage we do from the Flail when we use it. So here we've got the range to get down to 1 HP again, 
and we can use flail right there. We level up to level 10. Hoot hoot. Come on, just use like growl or something. No, he he doesn't. He goes tackle. So it appears that Troy has finally showed us the limits of our magic carp. So we're simply going to upgrade our magic carp instead of tackle. Let's give him an even better move. That's right. It's time for Dragon Rage Carp. Was an event move in Gen 1, guys. It's technically legit. Let's see how it goes. So here, obviously, we're up against Pokemon that have less than 40 HP. So uh, Dragon Rage, get wrecked. <laughs> and Dragon Rage, get wrecked. There we go. Yeah, Magikarp, he's perfectly fine here. This is perfectly consistent. So here we will now take on this final Sage Lee, where we'll just Dragon Rage at his Bell Sprouts. Look at the utter destruction of this Sprout Tower now. I mean, just look at that. We just completely wrecked all of these Sages. So clearly that is the strategy. So here we'll just escape rope. We'll run into Faulkner's gym after a quick heal. And uh, let's see if Magikarp can find a way through this gym now. First things first, Honest Abe with his Spearow, uh, he has 27 HP, so uh, I guess we just Dragon Rage. And we get an easy one hit KO victory. On to the God Rod, where once again, he may be the God Rod, but he's no match for God Carp. Here we are simply spamming the Dragon Rages and destroying his entire gym. Now we can come up here, we can save the game, let's fight against Faulkner himself and see how this goes. So here, Faulkner, he's going to send out his Pidgey. I'm going Dragon Rage. One hit KO. Out comes the Pidgeotto. And how about a Dragon Rage? One hit KO. And just like that, guys, we have gotten Magikarp through the Faulkner section on maximum battles. It was actually kind of hard there for a minute. You know, if we had just put on Dragon Rage from the beginning, though, we would have crushed everything. I, I, I wanted to try, guys. I wanted to try the Flail strats really, really bad. No, Dragon Rage is the way to go. So just like that, we can add Magikarp to the winner's column. You guys just never expected that we would get this Pokemon through on maximum battles, did you? Did you? Come on, be honest. Tell me right now. You didn't expect that this one would be able to do it, no matter how much we helped. So with that being done, now let's get back to our other challengers, where we can see that now we have four that I actually am a little bit worried about. I'm not going to lie. Because, of course, with Magikarp, I knew that I could just throw on Dragon Rage and I would get through this. These ones are tough. Every single Pokemon that is left on the list, Caterpie, Paras, Sunkern, and of course, Tyrogue, have a type disadvantage in Faulkner's Gym. In the case of Paras, it's a four times weakness to flying, which could just get completely wrecked no matter what we do. But we're going to have to try, guys. We just have to try egg moves, anything that they can get via breeding. Let's just see if it works out. And I'm going to start off with that Paris. Let's just see if we can find a way through with it. So now I'm really kind of debating what move set to give to Paris, because there are a lot of options on there, but I'm not sure how many of them are actually going to be any good in this section. We can obviously get an egg move like Psybeam. Flail is available. We could use TM moves like Fury Cutter. Obviously, Curse could be on there, but if we look at the Gen 1 moveset, we can get things like Body Slam and Sword Stance, which might be even better than using Curse. So I'm going to try a few different ideas with this one, but I'm going to start off, I think, with a moveset that gives it the maximum amount of coverage while giving it the ability to boost. So I'm thinking to go Body Slam, Fury Cutter, we'll also give it Psy Beam, and finally, Swords Dance, just so that it can power up, because maybe the Swords Dance Body Slams will be enough to get through Faulkner at a higher level. So here now Paris has been given a pretty OP moveset, at least from the outside looking in. We'll find out if it actually works. We have Body Slam, Swords Dance, Fury Cutter, and Psybeam with the leftovers on. And I think we at least get through rival number one fairly reasonably with this. Obviously, having access to moves like Body Slam and Psy Beam also mean we should do decent damage when we get into the Sprout Tower, and it's not like we're really scared of any of the Bell Sprouts in there. So we should be able to crush that section. The whole question with this Pokemon is Honest Abe. If we can get through Honest Abe, then I think we have a decent shot because we're only going to get Tackle from Faulkner's Pidgey, and then we could just set up all the Sword Stances there and then just hopefully one shot after that but the four times weakness is the major issue. 
So first things first, let's take on rival number one. And here we're just going to go into the body slam, I think. In fact, I'll, I'll do one sword stance just so that we can double our attack stat. And we don't quite get the one hitter, but we paralyze him. And there we go. We get through rival one. No problems whatsoever. So first things first, now let's take on youngster Joey, where he's going to come out with his rat. But let's just see how some of these moves actually look. If we set up a sword stance and go into Fury Cutter, Obviously, it's not going to do great damage at the beginning, but it almost two shots there. We just barely missed the range and we level up. Let's fight now against youngster Mikey. Obviously, we're just going to body slam his pigeon, but let's go ahead and set up a sword stance first, where now we can body slam and get a one hit KO. I think body slam is pretty much the way to go here. It should just one shot basically everything. The only case where we'd want to go Fury Cutter is if something was actually going to take a lot of turns. But otherwise, it's not actually that useful of a move, I guess. So here, one Swords Dance into the Body Slam on good old Don Age Boy. We are going to uh, just not learn Stun Spore, because who needs Stun Spore here? And let's just wreck that one. Now, it's also worth noting that Spore is a level up move, so we could have thrown Spore onto this moveset to be completely broken. I decided not to do that at this point. But if we run into any serious trouble, we will go that route eventually. So here we're just going to spam the body slams on Bugcatcher Wade and look at the utter destruction that Paris is just bringing on all of these trainers now. Nothing stands a chance, nothing stands in the way until we get to Honest Abe. And obviously with a four times resistance to Vine Whip, even here at the top of the tower up against these bell sprouts, they can use growth and they still only do one damage per hit. So we can just heal that up with the leftovers and we take down Sage Neil. Now let's take on Sage Troy. We're almost to the final trainer. And just like that, we have finally made it to Sage Lee at level 11. Let's just see how this goes in this fight. So it is Sage Lee attempt number one. I'm going to set up the swords dance first. And let's just do a couple of them since he's at level seven. I just want to make sure that we one shot everything here and we'll just hold down auto A on body slam. And finally, Hoot Hoot comes out. Look at it get wrecked in one hit. That was easy. Super, super easy. And now we can go ahead and get the escape rope and let's get out of here. But now this is actually a question. I'm actually really nervous about this next fight. Are we going to be able to get through at level 12? against that Spiro. So one thing that we can go for is the paralysis with body slam. Let's see if this works. So here we go. We've got Honest Abe out. I'm going to give him a body slam. He did massive damage turn one, but it looks like if we can get the paralysis, we will get through this fight because that will lower his speed. We just need the luck to get it to go. There is the paralysis on the second attempt and body slam destroys Honest Abe. That's right, you had no chance against Paris. Now we can move on to Rodney, who he's just got a couple Pidgeys that don't know any flying type moves, so we just destroy him. Oh, there we go. Look at this. So now it's time to heal up very quickly. Let's check the stats and let's see if on maximum battles we can get through this section. You know, maximum battles, I kind of like this, guys. Maximum battles, maximum excitement as we get to some of these terrible Pokemon. We are at level 12 with 34 HP, Body Slam, Sword Stance, Fury Cutter, and Psybeam. We've got leftovers on. Not sure leftovers are actually that useful. We should probably use like a gold berry or something, but don't worry about that. Don't worry about strategy here. This isn't a strategic, strategic sort of setup. Come on. We have 26 attack, 22 defense, 20 special attack, 22 special defense, and 15 speed. We ain't out speed nothing, but I think we got this, guys. I think we got this. Let's fight against Faulkner. Attempt number one here. We are going to set up three swords dances right away on this first Pidgey. The entire logic here is to be able to one hit KO everything from here on out. We one shot the Pidgey. Out comes Pidgeotto. It's going to go Gust. We survive with five HP. And just like that, Harris has joined the winner's column. Maximum battles and a completely broken moveset. That's all you need to get through this section with a Paris. It's obvious, guys. How would you run a Paris any other way? Come on. Come on. Tell me. Seriously. How would you run a Paris any other way? We could have given it Spore. We could have been even more broken, but we we didn't. We we 
resisted the urge to just use Spore. So just like that, we have gotten through. Let's go ahead and save the game with this Paris. We'll pick up the legend of Paris, wee oui, wee, oui, in the next run, maybe. Oh, that would be stupid to do a full game run with this one. Anyway, Paris is through. Let's check our other challengers and see how they go. So next up, we have some of the weakest Pokemon in Gen 2, except for Tyrogue. Tyrogue is a legendary Pokemon. We're going to save that one for a little bit later. Let's check out the God Kern. Sun Kern is here for some redemption. Now, I'm not going to lie. I'm actually really nervous about Sun Kern because it doesn't get a great move pool. I'm not exactly sure if any strategy that we could use is actually going to work here. We're going to try a lot of things because obviously with a critical hit, there's always a chance that we get through something, but we've got very low stats across the board, so we're not really looking at anything too great. So I'm going to try this Pokemon with a moveset of Sludge Bomb, Giga Drain, Synthesis, and Growth. I'm not sure that this has any shot whatsoever, but we're at least going to try it. Let's just see. Now, obviously, Sun Kern kind of takes the reputation as far as Pokemon that learn TMs of being the worst in Gen 2. I'm not sure if this Pokemon would actually ever be able to beat the game all the way to the end without a lot of luck. Like most people were, will give it, you know, max DVs and a bunch of vitamins and, you know, all kinds of stuff and just grind levels like crazy to get tons of stat XP. My style is usually to go more minimal, but this might be one of those rare Pokemon that you actually have to do maximum battles to even have a shot especially because the first two gems just completely destroyed grass. So I'm really not sure if this is even going to be possible without technically grinding even more battles. We're only fighting each trainer once here. We're not taking like infinite blackouts here. So let's just see if we can get this to go. So first off, rival one, we are going to spam sludge bomb on him and it doesn't do that much damage, but it does look to be at least a four hit KO here. And we still had the berry on. <laughs> I didn't even change my held item. We could have used like the poison barb there in order to deal more damage. For now, I'll just give it leftovers and we'll just adjust our held item if we need to. So here, let's take on youngster Joey with his rat. And this one, we're obviously going to go for Giga Drain. This is just the best play, I think, in this fight. We do over half health there and we're able to two shot that first Rattata. Now on to youngster Mikey, who's going to lead off with his bird. So I think here we just sludge bomb it to death and we get it a one hit KO there. Very nice. Now we can go back to the Giga Drain where we're going to recover some nice HP off of this Rattata. And there we go. Easy victory. So now time to take on some of these bug catchers where I think we can just spam the sludge bomb. One other issue we have here is that we don't have a ton of HP, but we get a nice poison right there. Here, let's just keep this going. Nice, easy victory. But here I think we need more PP before we take on Bugcatcher Wade, just because he has four Pokemon on his team. Even if we're one-shotting against the Caterpies, we might not one-shot on the Weedle. And I just don't want to run out of PP because we've only got 10 in that Sludge Bomb. So here, let's try Bugcatcher Wade. We're just going to go Sludge Bomb right there and get the one hit KO. Very nice. I always forget that these Pokemon are at level two. <laughs> so we get to level nine right here. But yeah, the Weedle is going to take a couple of turns to knock out. We do knock it out, though. And out comes the Caterpie. Easy one hit KO. Now, obviously, we have a pretty big advantage as we go into the Sprout Tower, given the fact that we have resistance to grass type moves. So this section shouldn't be too difficult. It's really going to be the Faulkner section. So let's just see if we get through these nice and easy, how it goes when we get to that section. Now, one advantage that we do have is that we're in the medium slow level up group. So we're actually gaining more levels here. All of these Pokemon up to this point have pretty much been level 12 getting through. But here, just by beating Sage Edgemond, <laughs> say Sage Edmund, I swear I can talk. We have made it to level 12 and we're already at the same level as most Pokemon finishing the Sprout Tower. So we've made it to Sage Lee at the very top of the tower. And I think the strategy is pretty simple. We're going to go for the growths right here first on the Bell Sprout, just because once we get to the Hoot Hoot, we're going to want to be able to just knock it out very easily by using Giga Drain. So here with six growths set up, the leftovers still have us at full health. 
We can just sludge bomb here on the Bellsprout. It's going to be a two hit KO either way. So we're just going to knock that one out. Second Bellsprout comes out. We're just going to continue our sludge bomb spam. We're back to full health as we go into the Hoot Hoot at level 14. Here Giga Drain gets us a two hit KO range here. Not too bad. Easy victory. We have beaten Sage Lee and now we can make our way to Faulkner's gym. But now we have to answer the question, even on max DVs with all the trainer battles done and with a completely broken moveset and with the ability to add on random, you know, held items. Do we even get through Honest Abe with this Pokemon? This could actually be hard, but let's find out. Honest Abe attempt number one. So the strategy, I'm going to go straight for the Sludge Bomb. And he didn't actually do that much damage there. I'm actually kind of surprised. We're going to get through this in two turns. That was easy. Wait a second. Now we can come up here and we can fight against Rod, where I'm simply going to start with a synthesis. Let's just get our HP back and now just go into some sludge bombs. And look at this. Oh, we're just two shotting here. Sunkern, you legend. The God Kern, guys. He is he is a beyond all of these trainers we get to level 15 i'm just gonna heal up very quickly to make sure we've got all the sludge bombs as we go into faulkner but wow 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 this is much better than i thought this would be so here let's save the game let's take on faulkner and this clearly is going to be an epic fight so here first things first i'm going to sludge bomb his pidgey we almost get the one hitter there we knock it out in two turns. Out comes Pidgeotto. It is faster than us, but it doesn't do that much damage. Only like 11 damage. And then we heal up with the leftovers and it's a two hit KO. So Sunkern maximum battles defeats Faulkner. That was stupid. <laughs> that was stupid. Oh, I want to change his name. Yes. Oh, look at him. In all his glory, the God Kern has <laughs> defeated Faulkner. Oh my gosh. Oh, that was ridiculous, guys. Are you kidding me? He's at level 15 now, 39 HP. This moveset, oh, and he's got 20 attack, 19 defense, 19 special attack, 19 special defense, and 19 speed. He's just completely broken. Oh, I want to play the game with this whole, just the whole game with this Pokemon. We might have to change up the movesets at some point. We might have to go like, you know, Solar Beam, Sunny Day. I don't know. Oh, but this is ridiculous. So the God Kern gets through. Now let's see who's up next. So looking at our final two challengers, we have Caterpie and we've got Tyrogue. I say we check out the Tyrogue before we do something very, very special for the Caterpie. So with that, let's get Tyrogue loaded up and find out what moves it's going to get. Now, Tyrogue infamously only learns tackle via level up making it one of the worst Pokemon <laughs> in this generation. But it is also a legendary Pokemon. We know that because if you ever beat the entire game with a single Tyrogue, you can definitively say that that Pokemon, it's not just Hall of Fame tier, it is a legend tier. It's just like when we did the Legend Carp run in Gen 1. We're going to make legends of all these Pokemon, I, I promise you. So here we're going to pick up our Tyrogue and we're going to give it a much better moveset. Let's find out how this goes. So just like that, we have replaced his moveset with something much, much better. High Jump Kick is an egg move for Tyrogue if you just breed it from a Hitmonlee. We also can get access to Strength, Mud Slap, and Curse, all TMs in Gen 2. And these might just be enough to allow us to have a shot with this Pokemon. That being said, one issue that we always had with this Pokemon was the fact that it's weak against flying. and. We don't know if we're going to actually survive enough turns in order to knock out our opponents. We are in the medium fast level up group, which means we're not going to get as many levels as we just got with that Sunkern. So first up, rival number one, where fortunately grass doesn't actually resist fighting. So we're just going to high jump kick it and we got a critical hit turn one. I'm now actually going to curse at him because I'm angry at him for uh, using growl on me. And now let's high jump kick him again. And if we can just land the hit, I think we get through. Very nice. Easy victory. So I think there's going to be a lot of spots where we simply curse and then high jump kick here. But we've added on strength just because the bell sprouts are going to be pretty tough with just a fighting type move. 
and same for like the hoot hoots and whatnot. We're probably better off by simply using curse and using strength in those spots. Granted, against the flying normal types, we are at least getting a same type attack bonus on our high jump kick, so that's probably the way to go. So first up, Youngster Joey. We don't need to do any setup here, I don't think. Well, I think we just go straight for the high jump kick, and it is a one-hit KO. Very, very nice. On to Youngster Mikey, where I think it's the same strategy. Just hold down auto A on high jump kick. We destroy the Pidgey, and we're going to destroy the Rattata. But now we've got some bug catchers like Donnie here, where we're going to just simply spam the curses and then go for strength. Fortunately, he's not going to do that much damage because we're using curse. So the tackles are pretty irrelevant. And now we can just go strength to destroy these Pokemon. Wade's up next where we're just going to curse even more because we got left with a Tyrogue at the beginning of the game. But now we should just be in a one hit sweep mode if I don't misclick and use Mud Slap. <laughs> and look at the utter destruction of those bugs. No problem whatsoever. And now it's time to make our way to the Sprout Tower, where I think we can get through this between Curse and Strength, but let's just see. And here with just a couple Curses set up, we are one-shotting these Bell Sprouts, so no trouble whatsoever. We might not have even needed the Curses, I'm not sure. I set them up just to be safe. So here, let's try the next Sage here, Sage Chow, without even setting up Curse. It's just not quite a one-hitter, so clearly two... Two hits there. We can simply use one curse here and now they should be one hit KO ranges. Or not even ranges, they're just one hit KOs. Rip. So we'll follow the same strategy here on good old Edmund. Strength. One hit. Oh, look at us using strength in battle. Whoever used strength in battle, are you kidding me? So now we've made it to the top where of course these bell sprouts are going to be at higher levels. So I think a little bit more setup with curse is in order just to make sure that we have the power that we need to completely destroy these Pokemon. And even with two curses, it's not quite enough on this first Bellsprout, so we will level up to level 10 right here. So we're probably better off against the second Bellsprout coming up. So here we'll go for two curses again against Sage Neil, and now it should just be a matter of using strength. And we do get the one hit KO. So the final Sage Troy before we get to the master of this section. So we'll set up two curses because we've only got two left. And then it's time to go into first the strength here on Bellsprout, which is a one hit KO. And now Hoot Hoot comes out. We are going to give it a high jump kick. And look at that. So since we're out of curse PP, we're going to run out and get set up here with a heal. So of course our rival is going to be like, there's no way that you can beat the Sage with that single Tyrogue. Are you kidding me? But we're going to come in and we're going to fight him anyway. This guy who likes Bell Sprouts way too much. We're just going to sit here and start setting up the curses first. And after a couple of curses, now let's go into strength and we get the one hit KO on Bell Sprout number one. Here we're going to strength again, get the one hitter on Bell Sprout number two. And now it's time to high jump kick his Hoot Hoot. And look at that, we just kicked his bird just like that. We have made it through this section, but now is the actual question of this run. After a quick escape rope and now a heal, we have to find out if we can get through Honest Abe. So here I'm going to save the game and let's just see if we can get through on the first attempt. We're just going to go all in on attack here. Let's just do this. So here he pecks, we high jump kick. It's not quite enough to one shot but strength finishes it. And just like that, we have gotten through. Let's save the game. Let's take on Rod, where I think high jump kick will be enough as long as it hits. We get a one hitter there on the first Pidgey and here one hitter on the second Pidgey. Just like that, Rod goes down. And now I think we've got this because we're going to just curse at Faulkner so much that he's never going to want to fight us in a Pokemon battle again. So here, let's save the game. Let's check the stats coming in with Tyrogue. So here, Tyrogue is at level 12 with 35 HP. We have high jump kick, strength, mud slap, and curse. We're holding leftovers and let's check the stats. Sorry about that. We have 18 attack, 17 defense, 18 special attack, 18 special defense, and 17 speed. We're gonna outspeed that first Pidgey, guys. Let's go. Faulkner, attempt number one. So here against Faulkner, we are going to just curse at his pigeon and this pigeon's just going to tackle us repeatedly, but we don't really care about that. 
you know, we'll take the speed drop as we curse because we just want to get to be the ultimate power in this gym. So just like that, we can probably just go strength on Pidgey and one shot it. Very nice. Out comes Pidgeotto. We're going to go for the high jump kick. Let's just do this. He uses Gust and does seven damage, but it is a one hit KO. We get to level 13 with Tyrogue. And just like that, Faulkner, no problem. No problem whatsoever. This Pokemon, Tyrogue, he has been redeemed. Look at him. Look at him shake his little fist at the world. <laughs> He's just like, damn you for, for doubting me. <laughs> Sorry, I find that hilarious. Oh man, Tyrogue, you legend. So just like that, Tyrogue is done. Now let's move on to the final Pokemon. So now that we have gotten through everything in this section, it is time to look at good old Caterpie. Now I love Caterpie. Everybody loves a Caterpie, but we know the results of this already, I think. But let's just verify what is actually going to happen. So obviously, if we can find a way to get through Faulkner with a Caterpie, I think we can just by default pass every single Pokemon through this section of the game, because naturally, Caterpie is one of the worst Pokemon in the history of the franchise. I mean, look at those stats. 30 attack, 20 special attack, 20 special defense, 35 defense. It's slightly better than Sunkern there. But still, if we can find a way through with this one, that will just be completely stupid. So I think first things first, we pick up our Caterpie and we just get ready to go through this whole section. We know that Rival 1's not going to be easy. We know that lots of things aren't going to be easy, but we should give this one just a little bit of help. So first things first, we'll give it access to the pink bow. That should give a slight boost to its tackle, allowing it to do just a little bit more damage. And of course, this Pokemon, when it gets into the Bellsprout Tower, is not really going to be scared of the Bellsprouts. So it does have an advantage in that way. We got to keep in mind, of course, that we could get technically infinite berries here and we could just completely break this game. But let's just see first things first, if we can even get to the Sprout Tower reasonably with a Caterpie. So first things first, let's save the game right here and get into the rival one fight. So here for this fight, I'm simply going to spam tackle over and over and over again. And of course, it's going to be a bit of a damage race here to see who can do more. It looks like he's going to knock us out in one more hit, but we might have had him in one more hit. So if we can get a crit here and not get a growl, I think we might be able to get through this. So he misses his first tackle in this one. And that's the other way we could get through is with a good tackle miss. But we still clearly need a little bit more luck than that. So it doesn't seem to be really working with the pink bow. So now I want to try this one with a gold berry just to see if maybe the heal will be enough to get us through this. Because the pink bow doesn't seem to have gotten us a better damage range here. We're still doing three damage per hit. And just like that, we do get through on the second attempt with the gold berry. So now we can take on youngster Joey. We're just going to try this one time as we are and just see this whole section might come down to things like berries, though. This looks to be a five hit KO. And yeah, we definitely need a heal in the middle of that fight. Now, leftovers might be enough here, so let's just try this out. So here, Tackle does five damage per hit, but we're going to heal up a little bit of damage. So that should let us get some extra hits here. We both missed a Tackle for one turn there, but he still manages to knock us out. We're so close to taking him down, though. A critical hit will clearly get this done. And honestly, a berry is probably enough here. I'm just kind of going crazy on this, but there we go. We get through on this attempt. So realistically, both fights with the right ranges could have gotten through with just a berry with this Caterpie. Now let's get up here and fight against youngster Mikey. He's not a guaranteed victory here, so let's find out. So of course, he's going to lead off with his Pidgey. We missed the first tackle. That was terrible. And now we're going to have to get a three hit range there. Out comes his Rattata. He tail whips us and we're looking like a five hit KO here. He goes for another tail whip and we miss a tackle, but he tail whips. There we go. Yes, youngster Mikey, you legend. We didn't even have a berry on in that one. We still won. So now it's on to youngster Don with his Caterpies, where we're just going to sit here and spam the tackles at him and hopefully just take him down just like this. Very nice. We get to level seven. 
and we can just sit here and keep tackling. And technically we could evolve right here, but we're not going to. No, no, no. This is a Caterpie run. Swear to God. We're just going to do this with a Caterpie. Let's just find out. I, I'm actually really interested to find out if Caterpie can be even like halfway decent here. So here it's time for Bugcatcher Wade. Still looks to be three hit KOs here on the Caterpies. Fortunately, they're doing like no damage here, so we should get through this fight just fine at level seven. And here, like Weedle, he's going to spam some some poison stings on us, but he's a three hit KO even at level three. And we can just continue to destroy. Nice. So we get through Bug Catcher Wade, no problem. So now in the Sprout Tower, of course, we resist grass. So we should be just fine here against these vine whipping little bell sprouts. In fact, we should probably just put on a uh, leftovers here and just easily destroy, but we don't need to. We can see that you just get a Caterpie over here and just get some easy, easy victories. And just like that, we have taken down the first Sage and we will not evolve. And let's just keep going in this section. So the only real thing we need to pay attention to is our tackle PP, just to make sure that we have enough left over that we can get through these fights. And here now at level nine, we're easily destroying these ones. So now we've made it to the top floor. Of course, the bell sprouts are a little bit stronger. They can use growth now, but they're still just not going to do any meaningful damage, I don't think. So we can simply tackle them down and win. And at this point, we've made it to level 10. So legitimately, we would have evolved into a Butterfree at this point. And you would just be doing this section with a Butterfree. And we can see that really outside of Rival 1, this hasn't been that hard. You know, with a healing item like a berry, you would have been able to get through these fights. So it's not like it would be that difficult to simply evolve a Caterpie into a Butterfree just by fighting these trainers and pretty easily get through the game from there, I think. Granted, Metapod's different stat distribution could make some of these fights a little bit more difficult, but I still don't think the Bellsprouts would do all that much. Of course, here against Sage Troy, we have the first Hoot Hoot that we do have to be a little more scared of since Hoot Hoot could do decent damage with Tackle, but it's only doing three damage per hit and we're going to get through this fight. So finally, it's time for Sage Lee at the top of the tower. Let's see how he goes with his two Bellsprouts and his one Hoot Hoot. We're just going to spam tackle the whole way. He's using growth on his bell sprout, but that only has him doing three damage per hit with his vine whip. So we get through the first bell sprout, no problem. Onto the second bell sprout, it's going to go for essentially the same strategy, it seems. But we're going to get through this one just fine. Now, the question is, do we have enough HP to take out Hoot Hoot without adding on a berry? We're doing decent damage. It looks like a four hit KO range. Maybe a little less, and we actually get knocked out there. Okay, so I think a berry would have done it for us. Let's just give the berry to Caterpie, and let's just try this again. So now here we can go for the tackle spam, and this should basically be fine, I think. We're just going to get through that fight. Nice. On to the second bell sprout, who is going to use growth right away. Looks to be a five hit KO range if we don't get a crit here. Just barely missed knocking it out. But now we've got 20 HP going to Hoot Hoot. He uses Foresight, that's perfectly fine. And now we're going to heal with the berry. And with the berry, I think we have enough HP that we can just get through this. Very nice. Sage Lee goes down, we get to level 12. No problem whatsoever in this section. So honestly, I think berries would have just gotten us through all of those fights with reasonable amounts of consistency. So now we just have to make our way to Faulkner's Gym. And this is where it gets scary. We have a couple options, of course. We could start off by just trying to go in and attack with our tackle. If that doesn't work, we could try to add on a pink bow for a little bit more damage, or we could try to go for struggle strats here, since struggle is effectively much stronger. And with the pink bow, it actually synergizes with the pink bow and gets extra damage. And of course, we can add on a berry in order to try to get through this fight. I'm going to give a berry right here. Let's just see how this fight goes against Honest Abe. So first things first, at this level, we are faster than this Spiro. So we get a hit first and that did seven damage. So this is a four hit KO range just as we are. So he's going to peck us again. We're going to heal right there. 
We get a hit. He doesn't get a crit right there. And it looks like we get through Honest Abe with just a berry now. Are you kidding me? Oh, Honest Abe, you never had a shot. Never had a shot. So we're going to run out. We're going to heal. Let's save the game right here. Let's take on the God Rod. So Caterpie, do your thing. Yes. Oh, with your 16 attack stat. <laughs> here, we're going to uh, just go ahead and take down that Pidgey. Nice. Here, next Pidgey comes out. We're going to just take this one out. Very nice. No problem. And we still had 19 HP remaining. Very good. So we wouldn't have even used a berry if we had had one on. But now is the scary part. We have to take on Faulkner himself. This is like one of those Pidgeys plus having the God Rod or plus having Honest Abe's Spiro is kind of what this is like. Let's see how we go in this fight. We've got the berry on. Let's check the stats. Caterpie coming in at level 12 with 37 HP. Tackle and String Shot is the moveset. We got the berry. 16 attack, 17 defense, 14 special attack, 14 special defense, 20 speed. We're going to outspeed everything. Let's see how this goes. So here, Faulkner attempt number one against this Pidgey. It's just going to use Tackle on us. It's doing three damage per hit. We get a nice miss there, and that's a four hitter. Now out comes the Pidgeotto. We outsped, but we missed. Are you kidding me? And we did five damage. So this is a seven hitter to get through Pidgeotto. We're probably not getting the seven hit range. Let's just try this again, though. So obviously we need to get a better range right here against the Pidgey, where we can just tackle it down with four hits. No problem on the Pidgeotto. Don't miss, please. But yeah, that gust does a lot of damage and we don't really have any way to reduce that damage. OK, so the first thing that I want to try here is to go in with struggle. So the way that I would do this is I would leave myself with no PP in our uh, string shot and then just four PP in tackle, since naturally tackle is going to be fine to get through the first Pidgey. So here, let's take our first attempt against Faulkner with struggle strats. So first off on the Pidgey, we're going to go tackle. This should be a four hit KO as long as we don't get bad ranges. We get a critical hit from the Pidgey. That was bad. But here now we struggle and struggle did seven damage. So this is a five hitter, but perhaps with the berry and perhaps with a critical hit, we could find a way through this. We heal right there. OK, nice crit there. And we get knocked out from that range. OK. So this one, we got a nice miss from the Pidgey. So we've got slightly more HP here. We can heal up to 25 HP after the first gust, but it's just not going to be enough here to get through with our Caterpie as it is. So now I think it's time to see if we can get through with a gold berry since we would just heal a little more damage on that Pidgeotto. Maybe this works. So here we got the critical hit on the Pidgeotto. We just have to survive one more hit and we've got one HP. So we knock it out as we get knocked out. Oh, that was so terribly close. There are damage ranges on this fight where sometimes they'll do 15 damage. Sometimes they'll do like 17 damage. So we would have needed just a good range from his damage to have one more HP left. Oh, that was terrible. And there we finally get the crit at the end. Four HP remaining. So it did take a gold berry, so it's not technically completely legit. But we have managed to beat Faulkner on maximum battles with a Caterpie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Caterpie. No, no Chatterpie. Come on. Oh, just look at him. The legend of Chatterpie level 13 beats Faulkner. And I think we can make a pretty bold statement right here. If Caterpie can beat Faulkner by just taking every single trainer before the first gym. And yes, it's luck based. Yes, it takes a little bit, you know, but I mean, that was so incredibly close. If you played like a normal player and fought against wild Pokemon, something that I never do on this channel, you would have easily been able to get through the first gym with even a Caterpie. So this just tells me that I think we can effectively pass every single Pokemon 251 through the Faulkner section on maximum battles. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, let me know. 
and uh, we might have to come back and do more maximum battles against uh, Bugsy. Oh, that's stupid. Come on. <laughs> but of course, uh, I got to end this video and I got to end it properly, guys. This is just my silly April Fools for you guys. We're not going to do max battles. <laughs> like, Why would I want to do maximum battles in this? That would A, take an absolute eternity, B, like if a Caterpie can do it, why? why? <laughs> and this just leads me to my ultimate point. When I watch solo challenges, I get a little bit irritated when I see people taking lots and lots of extra battles, unless they can clearly demonstrate that they need it. That's why I started my channels originally, is because I wanted to see how many Pokemon can beat the game without level grinding who can beat the game on just minimum battles. I think that should be the default starting point for any solo runner. Run on minimum battles as far as you can, then when you hit a wall that you can actually definitively say, okay, this is a wall, then you take the optional battles. Then you add on the TMs, because if you just give Pokemon everything, they're just gonna crush. And where's the challenge in that? I don't know, just my opinion. Take that for what you will. Anyway, with that, we're done. See you in the next one. Later.